The future of talent management runs across every industry, but now we're going to delve into a particular industry, professional services. The traditional professional services firm business model largely, largely operates by leveraging people and hours. But as technology, big data, information transparency and client computer literacy continue to improve, many services that were once the lifeblood of a professional services firm are becoming obsolete or substitutable. So how do firms evolve to create value in a digital economy? Our next speaker faces these questions every day. Ross Patain is a chartered accountant with over 25 years experience in providing business, reconstruction, asset securitisation, corporate advisory, property advisory and wealth management services. Ross is the Chief Executive of Crow Horworth in South Queensland and Managing Principal of the Brisbane office. He's also a member of Crow Horworth's Global Corporate Advisory Group and Property Advisory Committee. Ross is the non-executive chairman of QBiotics, a leading Queensland biotech company, and a member of the board of trustees of the Queensland Art Gallery and Gallery of Modern Art. Ross brings a strong commercial and strategic focus, drawing on years of experience as the lead advisor in complex transactions. Perhaps one of the most complex of all will be leading Crow Horworth through an era of significant industry change. Please make Ross welcome as he speaks with us on the future of professional services. Thanks, Danielle. Good morning, everyone. About a week ago, I was preparing uh, for this presentation. It was the 13th of March, and I was in Queentown, Queenstown, New Zealand, with uh, 320 of my closest business associates, partners of the firm Crow Horworth. We were framing and discussing our strategic objectives for the next 18 months, that, that cycle of our business. And uh, on that weekend, the Ides of March were upon us. So I thought it'd be good to start with a, a slide that depicted what happened on the Ides of, Ides of March. This is a painting by Vincenzo Camuccini, uh, painted in 1798, um, which is a depiction of the assassination of Julius Caesar. What's this got to do with professional services, you say? Um, this is a me metaphor that's been well used by a, a friend and uh, advisor to our firm, a fellow called Dr George Beaton, George Beaton, who's been scaring the living daylights out of lawyers, engineers and accountants all over the world. And uh, the assassination of Caesar marked the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. It's a relevant metaphor for where we're at in professional services, where, there are a new em where there's a new empire a new range of um, players battling the incumbents who either refuse to change or are changing too slowly. Recognition or denial of the oncoming changes has been muddied by a downturn in revenue uh, with the advent of the GFC and the difficult contractionary period thereafter. Talent pipelines and succession planning in many firms is at a crisis scenario with a demographic bulge skewed toward the baby boomer end. And the grim reality is there are a few individual buyers who are willing to pay for the goodwill or buy into the practices on the grounds of affordability and sustainability. Larger firms are choosing over which smaller firms they're buying and driving prices down in terms on these. Our clients um, have greater expectations and the competitive rivalry between firms is at an all time high. And this is threatening the existence of a set of industries which have been rooted in knowledge and expertise and have enjoyed, I would say, super profits for a number of generations. These days, clients are looking for long-term partners to meet their needs and the breadth of service offerings and office locations used by a client is positively correlated with client satisfaction ratings. And this is both at the big end of town and the smaller firms. The big four accounting firms, for example, have been diversifying their offerings into multidisciplinary practices. And this has occurred in a post Sarbanes-Oxley environment where independence and conflicts of interest have been closely monitored. Similarly, in the SME and middle markets, clients are increasingly looking to a breadth of service and a one-stop shop approach. 
and also a relationship that transcends geographic and jurisdictional boundaries. So to understand the future, we have to look into the present. As uh, William Gibson, a science fiction writer, wrote, the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed yet. So all around the world, we have um, these emerging players, new processes, um, new themes to the accounting profession and other professions. I'll talk momentarily, you know, quite narrowly, about the accounting profession because that's what I know best. Um, in our game, we have, uh, I guess, a, a series of processes um, that leads to the generation of financial statements or a tax return. It was interesting to see tax preparers at the top of the list of Michael's, um, or second from the top of the list in Michael's presentation. That's absolutely true. It's happening now. Um, process automation driven by cloud accounting computer systems, which are intelligent and which basically manage the process of data um, into a set of financial statements and a tax return is happening right now. Um, it seems to be a race in our profession as to whether to automate or to offshore, but certainly those jobs aren't being created locally um, in, the, in, a, in a new economy sense. Very soon it will be um, prevalent that cloud, cloud accounting software will be in 90% of small to medium sized enterprises. That is, a client has the ability to download their data, big data from their bank or financial institution, um, integrate with their supply, cha supply chains, um, integrate with their client um, uh, computer systems as well, and process straight through to a revenue collector at the, at the Australian Taxation Office or some other jurisdiction. It's happening now and it's more and more prevalent day by day. Clients, as a consequence, because of that storage of data, will be more transient and able to shift and choose their advisor much more readily than what they have been in the past. As a consequence, compliance prices, the cost of providing that service, will decline rapidly. Marketing, sales and other soft skills will be needed in our profession. Um, and young people will not buy into staid and boring. They'll be looking to practitioners who can give them those skills. And probably the best news of all for me and other practitioners is we probably won't have time-based billing anymore because it'll be based on um, milestones, outcomes and, and other ways of generating revenue. That is a breakthrough because I see that as being a, an instrument of having clients finally serve properly. What can't be replicated in a process automation system though is trust. Um, we can have machines that we trust, but the empathetic relationship between a client and an advisor is, as Michael again put, something that's difficult to replicate. And that's where we'll see the focus in our um, profession in terms of the skilling up of our next generation of advisors. The world of business models is a great study. <coughs> Excuse me. I refer, <coughs> I refer to it as the Uberization of uh, the professions. So that talks to the on-demand economy, um, where you've got a peer-to-peer a, a -peer network, a client advisor network, um, sometimes on different sides of the globe, in different time jurisdictions, um, who, uh, who facilitate the meeting of supply and demand. Um, you all know Uber, the, the taxi um, driving service, or sorry, the driving service that connects a, a driver with a passenger. But I'll take you through some, some interesting models. Um, starting at the bottom, Kaggle. It, now, we're already using uh, Kaggle in our business where we have a complex financial modelling system. We have access to the world's best data scientists who are able to um, bid for a project or compete um, on a competition to develop a solution to a complex algorithm. Um, Freelancer, I think Ash, um, Andrea spoke about briefly, but again, a system of connecting a buyer and a seller of uh, intellectual property services. Topcoder was a software development house, a virtual software development house that broke 
a, uh, a, a project into bite-sized pieces and distributed that around the world via a virtual computer system, virtual peer-to-peer -peer network. The next two are really, really interesting. Eden McCallum. So Eden McCallum is a consulting business um, growing rapidly, yeah, now turning over more than $500 million a year. Um, to become a consultant with Eden McCallum, you would have had to work for McKinsey's, Boston Consulting Group, uh, or Bain & Co. Um, your clients are the uh, Fortune 500 or the, the, uh, the Forbes 100 firms. You're rated as a consultant before you join, and then clients rate you perpetually as you get more work, much like the system that uh, Andrea showed us. Um, interesting in that they are providing the same um, project-based, uh, value-orientated uh, consulting work, but at a fraction of the cost of the big three consulting firms and threatening their very existence. The next one is Axiom. Axiom is a, uh, is a law firm. Axiom was founded in uh, the year 2000 and is, a, again, a virtual law firm. It doesn't actually have an office front apart from its group headquarters, I believe, but connects a series of lawyers working in their front office offices, front rooms in their homes with clients who are, again, comprised of Fortune 500 and Forbes 100 companies. Axiom turns over about $100 million in 2012. In 2018, it's predicted to turn over $1.8 billion globally. Um, it is the one to watch in the legal services profession and has everybody worried. So what does this mean for the future of, a, of an employee? Um, particularly in professional services, these are the things that we, that we are already seeing in our game. Um, we have a truly flexible approach to work, or we'll need that to attract the best talent to advise our clients. Um, they will come to work to use the device that they prefer to use, um, not, the, uh, not the device that we prescribe them to use. Um, we will see the death of the ladder in customised work. So starting at the bottom of the, of the tree and working your way up is, is not the way we'll see our um, people grow and develop. They'll zigzag, we think, through our organisation. And perhaps take career breaks, um, flex on and flex off at various times. They'll share knowledge because that's what they expect um, their peers to do. Um, any one of them could be a leader at any stage of their career because their work will be broken into projects and they may lead a project or they may follow a, a leader in another project. And everyone is a teacher and a student in, these in, in our um, view of the, the future of our organisation. There will be uh, guys like the, me that can learn a lot from our, our young upcomers and uh, they'll be looking to me for the advice and guidance I can provide them in managing the relationships and providing them with the social intelligence that they need to grow and develop. Um, this work is, um, is the work of a fellow called Jacob Morgan who wrote recently for Forbes magazine. Um, suggest you have a look at that article. It's, it's a very interesting insight into what, um, what the future of our, uh, of our young upcomers will hold and how that relates to the past. And I'd like to close with um, a picture of the Power 7 or uh, the, an IBM um, supercomputer that's running an algorithm called Watson. Watson uh, is a medical diagnostic um, system and uh, I understand that uh, it's, it's challenged 26 specialists at once to come up with a medical diagnosis and, and beat them in terms of time and accuracy in the, in the, in the delivery of that diagnosis. The, the relevance of, of the Power 7, I think, in, in professional services is algorithms will determine the solution to complex problems, but the, uh, the empathy and the, uh, the social intelligence that Michael spoke of is something that can't be replicated by a power seven and is probably where you know, our, our creative um, and intuition, our creative and intuition skills will hold us in good stead as a profession going forward. Thanks for your time.